All right, let's say we have an equation that looks like this. y equals mx plus b. Well, we said before that that is a linear equation. That means that that's a straight line, okay? Now remember, x can be <clears throat> also called our input variable, and y can be our output variable. But the idea here is that x and y vary. So whenever I plug in a number for x, First, I multiply it by m, then I add this number b, and I get a unique y. Okay, So x and y vary within the given equation. But there's two things that are constant. There's the m and the b. The m is called the slope, which we're going to talk about in the next chapter. And b is the y-intercept. Okay, The y-intercept occurs where we cross the y-axis. Now remember, there was an inter interesting thing about that. When x was a zero, we crossed the y-axis, right? So what would happen if we plug a zero in for x? Well, we're gonna take whatever m is, multiply it by zero, what's the end result? It's a zero. So we take zero, add b, y equals a b. So the data point zero comma b falls on this graph. So let's say we have an equation y equals 2x minus 1. Okay? Now what I want to do is I want to graph this. One way I can do that is I can create a table. In that table, I have x and y data points. Okay? Now remember I said this is a straight line. How many points do you need in order to draw a straight line? Well, the answer is two, okay? But the more points we draw, the better our straight line is gonna look. Okay, we're human, we err, so it's a good idea, especially since I'm not using graph paper, that we get a lot of data points, okay? And we graph them. Well, we already know one data point, okay? That data point is zero comma b, okay? Where y equals mx plus b. So this number right here is our b. Now, b forewarned, that negative here is attached to that one. So I like to do a little sign change when I'm dealing with these problems. Okay. Sign changes help. So I have this data point here. When x is a zero, plug in a zero for x, y is a negative one. Let's lower this a little. Okay. Let's find another data point. Let's find when x is a negative two, and let's find when x is a positive two. So let's plug a negative two in for x. So I've got y equals two times negative two plus negative one, or I could put minus one. So y would be equal to two times negative two is negative four plus negative one, y equals negative five. So when x is negative two, y is a negative five. You can do it again. This time I'm gonna say x is a two. So y equals two times two plus negative one. So two times two is a four, plus negative one would be three. So when x is a two, y is a three. Well, I've got some data points here. Now I can plot the straight line. Now it doesn't matter what values I pick for x, okay? Because it's gonna give me values for y they are gonna create the same line. I'll show you. So I go zero, negative one, 0, negative 1, negative 2, 5, 1, 2, 5, and 2, comma, 3. 1, oh, sorry, <laughs> did it again, 1, 2, negative 5. There we go, some of you are going, what? All right, got to figure that out now. So 2, comma, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so notice how that creates a straight line, so I'm going to try to draw a freehand a straight line here from the side. Yeah, great job. <laughs> okay, so there's my straight line. Now, whatever data points that you chose, let's say you chose that x is a four, okay? When you go to x is four, your data point's gonna fall on this line, okay? No matter what x value you chose, it's gonna be on the exact same line that I drew, okay? Now, what are these little arrows here for? Why do I keep putting those arrows? That means it goes on forever, right? 
because if we look at this, I could pick anything for x. I could pick, put x is a million, x is a thousand, x is negative 20 billion. When I figure out what y is, it's still going to fall on this line no matter where we are. 